Here we have a Minimax tuner. It came in for no power. Now I opened up the device and I can see signs of liquid damage right here. So it looks like the tuner suffered liquid damage. Customer did not mention that, but that's what I see. Let's take a quick look here. This is the SD card reader. HDMI port looks good. Okay, so nothing really obvious on this side of the board except for residue that was on top of this component. Let's flip the board. Screen connects here. But the reason I kept the tape is because I saw a black spot on it, so I wanted to show it to you. You see the black spot here? Look at this. So it looks like this component is fried. And that's why the color transferred over to the captain tape. So let's remove it. I do not need it anymore. The connector itself, the LCD connector looks good. The component is definitely blown. I mean, there could be other blown components on the board, even if the component looks good. But right now we are going over what looks bad. Physical inspection is important. This component is the only thing I see wrong with the board right now. The good thing is we do have a donor board and we're going to extract the component from a donor board and replace this one here. Hopefully that will fix the problem. And right now we're going to be using our magnetic board holder because if you notice, the board has an HDMI port on the bottom here. So there's no board holder that will fit this board except probably the magnetic holder because the magnets are a little bit high so we can fit the board it's solid okay so it's tilted it's not making a connection from here from this side but that's okay because the board is solid and that's what i want i could not have used any other board holder to hold this board and that's where this magnetic board holder shines let's go to that burnt component remove it and then we're going to extract one from a donor board and i do have a donor board right next to me here Anytime I'm working on an XRT Minimax that has no power, I always grab a donor board just in case I need parts. So let's remove this component. But I'm going to use a narrow nozzle. I do not want the big one. I just want to focus heat on that one component. And maybe we'll do... 370. I do not need a lot of heat here. You see how I'm focusing heat only on this component? And that's because of this very narrow nozzle. I'm at a low temperature of 370. Usually 370 is a joke if you are trying to desolder a component of a MacBook motherboard, let's say. But on here, 370 is okay. And now we're gonna grab our donor board. And I do not have this in a board holder, so the board may wobble, but that's okay.
I do not want to lose that component. See what happens when the board is not being held by a board holder. It wobbles all over the place. I mean, 370 is not working on this board. I was able to remove the other component with 370, but this one, we may have to bump up the heat for some reason. It's not coming off. Let me bump up the heat. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to my original 370 Celsius. Super careful with this component. Where did it go? Oh boy. Where did it go? Ah, maybe it's still stuck somewhere on the board. Right there. That's the only one that I have. Okay. And like I always say, those components, they can snap and fly away if you're not careful. Especially when you are dealing with a smaller component, like the 201 SMD component or 1005 or 402 or whatever the case may be and when they're gone they're gone they fly away to the ninth dimension and you're never ever gonna find them anything else wrong with this board one way to find out we're gonna test and see if the device will turn on I mean based on physical inspection I do not see anything obvious flip the board and that's where I do not know what this is honestly I do not know what this is but it's not normal it's not a thermal paste it's nothing like that because this device does not have any thermal paste on it if I was a laptop next to the CPU you could say that this may be thermal paste but not on this device this is something I do not know what it is One thing that looks a little bit off is this component here. It looks kind of burned, but I don't know. I may be wrong. We'll keep that in mind. And I think I'm going to assemble the board and test. So all we need to do is connect the screen, plug the power cable, and test. The screen will go in like this. Let me do it under the magnifier. Okay, so the screen is connected. Let's go ahead and test. Let me plug this to the computer. And nothing. Uh, dead, still. So there must be something else that's wrong with this device. That component is one of the things that's wrong, but we have something else that's wrong, unless the screen itself is not good. I do not see any corrosion anywhere on the screen, so I'm going to assume that the screen is good. 
let's take another look at the board specifically at the USB port area I mean what can possibly go wrong maybe it's time for our thermal camera because right now I do not know where to start but let's see if our thermal camera can be of any help we see heat at the HDMI port area of the board right here what about back of the board oh look at this look at this we see a big heat spot right here oh this is the component that we just changed it's heating up a lot we need to take a look at the HDMI area of the board and at the component that we just changed why is this component heating up I mean why is this component heating up it could be that one of the components next to the HDMI port area is what's causing this component to go hot it could be that this is what's causing the other component to heat up and I suspected that this component is bad because of the discoloration that you see here so it's possible that this component is bad or it can be any one of those components but I do see discoloration here let me take a look under the thermal cam one more time we're gonna try to pinpoint what's getting hot on the board okay so we're gonna turn the power bank on and right there that's what's getting hot so the first thing that got hot is here that's the component that got hot first on the board we're gonna focus heat on this component only okay so we were able to get it done with 370 degrees We have one viewer that was asking how come sometimes when you solder something the joint is not shiny it's dull it depends if you clean unleaded solder and you apply leaded then the joint is going to be very shiny if you mix leaded with unleaded it may be semi shiny and if you keep unleaded then you may not get that shine so right now we did not completely remove unleaded we just applied leaded over so you're not going to get that full shine but it doesn't really matter I like it when the joint is shiny, but right now we do not need to clean unleaded. We're only soldering a, a three-legged component. Unleaded takes a lot more heat to desolder than leaded. Just grab this component firm, not too hard and not too soft. We do not want it to snap. I lost enough components to the ninth dimension, so enough is enough perfect okay let's see What do you think? Awesome. Awesome. It's on. Look at this. Amazing. The tuner is fixed. And this tuner is anywhere between $600 to $1,000. It's expensive. It's a car tuner. Job is done. The job is done. Amazing. My sister was surprised uh, that I fixed it because <laughs> she said this one is going to be tough but it's fixed that's it i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video a win this is a win